Hey booktubers and all you other YouTubers. This is Michael Romeo and I'm here to talk about books. Fresh off of my most recent bout of winter colds. I seem to be catching every single one that comes around this year. But that's okay. I'm going to try to get through this without blowing my nose. Maybe even without sneezing. Let's hope that's not too much to hope for. But anyway, I'm here to talk about something very serious. Um, I am taking part in a reading event that was started by MJ over at Reading This Life. And it is, I've talked about it previously, but I'm going to run through it again. It is reading 24 banned or challenged books in 2024. And the book that I am talking about right now, I've just finished, I finished it a couple of days ago, but this is the first chance I've had to talk about it, is The Perks of Being a Wallflower. And um, it's a powerful book. It's a powerful book on, on a number of levels. And um, it's about a teenager who obviously has some problems. Um, yet he's going through life day by day and he's got friends and these friends have their own issues and their own things that they're trying to get through. I'm not going to go into any detail of what these things are at this point, but it's a book that had it been been published when I was a teenager, this book would have been my best friend because I would have realized that I wasn't as alone as I thought I was in a lot of things. Um, there are a lot of things in that book that when I was a teenager would have been, would have been sucker for, for what was troubling me at that age. And people want to ban it. In some cases, it has been banned. It's been taken off of library shelves and school shelves. And um, and I, I, I somewhat understand the knee-jerk reaction that some people will have to this book because of the content in it. But my bet, and I'll, I'll lay this bet down solidly is that the majority of the people that have worked to ban it haven't read the book to the end they've read enough of it to know what's in the content but they haven't read it to the end to find out what the book's really all about see the book isn't about teenage sex but there's teenage sex in it not graphic, not detailed, incidental. And um, if, if I recall my teenage years correctly enough, there are teenagers who were having sex. I mean, that happens, right? There is drug use in it. Um, and as I recall when I was a kid in school, there were drugs all over the place. And I was in a rural upper income community school and um, yeah there were drugs and, and it wasn't an inner city school um, kids were using drugs not all of them by any means and this book doesn't tend to imply that all kids are using drugs uh, just some uh, there are LGBTQT issues um, in this book, and as I recall that there were, when I was growing up, maybe so, not so much the T, uh, but there were definitely LGBTQ going on with some of the students, because that's who they are, that's who they were then, and that's probably who they still are, if they're still alive. Um, the, 
to think that pulling a book off of a shelf and keeping it out of the hands of a teenager is going to protect them from these issues is blatant stupidity because it is going on all around them. And wouldn't it be nice to have a book that touches on these subjects, doesn't promote them, doesn't promote teenage sex, it doesn't promote homosexuality, it doesn't promote drug use, it simply talks about them. As if, just, just like in real life, just as they are, they exist. And that's all this book points out, is that they exist. And there's some of the things that the main character has to deal with. And has, in some cases, has difficult, difficulty with, and in other cases, has no difficulty with. But other characters do. And, oops, there goes my tissues. But, I might need them in a second if I keep up on this topic. Um, this is a powerful book, folks. It should be put into the hands of teenagers, not ripped out of the hands of teenagers. I'm not talking about giving it to somebody who's eight years old, or even nine years old, but somebody who's 14, 15, 16, 17, definitely, definitely could benefit from this book. Um... I'm going to do here what may be a spoiler, but the reason I say that the people who want to ban it haven't read it to the end, and again, spoiler alert, so if, if, you, if you don't want to hear this, skip ahead a little bit, um, but those who, who have not read it to the end will not know that it is an empowering book. It is a book of strength. It is a book of finding yourself and being yourself and being happy with that. It is about making it. And I don't mean by sex, I mean making it succeeding in getting through day by day um, even under the most dire circumstances because there is a dire circumstance in the book that affects the main character and you don't really find out about it just before the end you know there's something because the writer is a good writer and he does a good job of foreshadowing um, and when you find out what it is it, it breaks your heart to pieces but then we get to the end of the book after that and I don't want to say everything is all rosy and hunky-dory and oh, rah, rah, zip, boom, bah. But it is strengthening. It is empowering. It is... What? You want to come up? Come on. Don't interrupt me. But... Um, this book, like I said, would have been my best friend. I would have read it over and over and over again in high school. Just to know I wasn't alone. Because I was a wallflower. I was one of these nerdy bookworms that was a target for the bullies. And um, I, that's, that's all I got to say about, about that. And I cannot approve of anybody who wants to ban this book. Come on, Toby. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, life with kids. Oh, anyway, as I was saying, I cannot approve of anybody challenging and banning this book and keeping it out of the hands of teenagers. It's that that's just wrong. Because there are so many teenagers out there who can benefit from it. Who can learn from it. And I'm not talking about learning how to have sex. Or learning how to take drugs. Or learning how to be gay. 
No, that's not what I mean. They learn from it. They learn how to deal with life on a day-to-day -day basis. Even when the most dire things strike. Folks, th this is a prime example of the lunacy of banning books. And I will continue with this project all the more because I have read this book and know there are others out there that are under the same kind of attack for the same purposes that delivered just as strong a message. And, um, you know, banning books is nothing new. I'm reading an, another one right now, Sons and Lovers, that was published in 1913, I think it was. And when I get around to that one and tell you why it was banned, it gives you a chuckle a bit. But this one doesn't give you a chuckle because this is now, this is happening now. This is current time, current issues. And I think with my reading banned books, I'm going to focus more on the contemporary since that's what's going on now. Maybe I'll, I'll throw in a few older ones that are great examples of the lunacy of banning books. Um... But for the most part, I think I'm going to stick with the contemporary ones because they're, they're the ones that are at the core of what's happening right now, especially in places like Florida, Texas, Virginia, and um, other wonderful places. Perks of being a wallflower. Read it, folks. Read it and see, see what's being banned. See what's being taken out of the hands of our kids. And like I said, it's not a pure book. It's not a wholesome book. There is stuff in it that would make people... I know when I was reading, I was like, oh, I didn't expect that in a book for teenagers. Probably because when I was a kid, they yanked them all out of our hands when I was a kid, too. Um, but it's real. It's real life. It's not there for gratuitous pleasure. It's not there to titillate. It's there because it is real life. And as I said, the sex scenes are not detailed. The drug scenes do not promote taking drugs. The, the gay issues, you know, if your child is not gay to begin with, they're not going to be gay because they read the book. It doesn't work that way. And if your child is gay to begin with, and you're yanking this book out of their hands for that reason, then you're scaring the shit out of them. I can guarantee that. Because now, who do they turn to? And that's about all I'm going to say at this point. Perks of Being a Wallflower. Stephen Chbosky wrote it. Go ahead and read it. Please read it. It is definitely a book worth reading, even as an adult. It's a book worth reading, especially for teenagers. It's a book worth reading. Have a great night.